Today's story is a doozy. It's one that we'd call a classic. You've probably heard of it before. And if you're like me, you probably lay up at night still thinking about the ghastly details. So, let's get into it. Here is the blood-soaked story of the Papon sisters. Our story begins in Le Mans, France, 1905. Their family was troubled from the start. Rumors of infidelity and self-destruction swirled around their parents, Clément Duré and Gustave Papon, even before they were conceived. And in 1905, when Christine was born, their marriage had already deteriorated, and Gustavo was hit in the bottle pretty hard. Christine was their second child, but Emilia, the eldest daughter, was all but forgotten by her parents. And, I mean, they clearly had other things going on. At birth, Christine was sent to live with her uncle, because her parents could not be bothered with her, but maybe it was for the best, considering their, uh eccentricities. Leigh was born in 1911 and was also handed off to a more mature uncle, but a different one. But trouble was on the horizon for the girls. In 1912, when Amelia was 10, it came out that Gustava had violated her. And unfortunately, Clement chose to believe that Amelia had seduced the old man as a literal child. So, as punishment, she sent the girl to Pastor Catholic Orphanage, which had a reputation for being exceptionally cruel and unusual. And we're talking about the turn of the century France here. Christine and Leah were soon enough sent by Clement to join their sister, where it was intended they would stay until they hit the ripe old age of 15 and could be sent into the workforce. A choice that would seal their fate forever. Amelia decided to join a convent when she was old enough, and Christine, who was also moved by the word of God, considered joining her. But Clement, who still maintained contact with her children, forbade this, and instead put her to work. At the orphanage, she had been instructed in household tasks in preparation for her to become a live-in maid. And, of course, most of the money she collected from her services went right into the pockets of Clement. Leah soon joined her sister in the housekeeping industry, and they would gain high praise for their services. Christine was described as a diligent worker with a penchant for cooking, but she did have a bit of an attitude problem. And who can blame her? While Leah, on the other hand, was described as reserved and quietly obedient, but not as handy as her sister. Clement was seemingly never satisfied with their pay and would often make them switch employers at a moment's notice. But no matter where they went, the girls would only agree to a job if they could be both hired. In 1926, Christine and Leah landed a job as live-in maids in a wealthier part of Le Mans for a couple and their grown daughter. The family consisted of Monsieur René Lancelin, his wife Madame Leonie Lancelin, and their daughter Genevieve. They lived in a multi-story house with classic French architecture, and according to resources, they were fairly nice people. The sisters were provided with food, above average pay, which made Clement happy, and a heated room, which was a huge luxury. The girls worked there for roughly seven years, and in the beginning, things went pretty smoothly. They received praise for their work, and the family was kind to them. In fact, Madame Leoni actually advocated for the girls and convinced them to stop spending so much of their wages to Clement. But considering the aristocracy of it all, things were not as rosy as they appeared. Madame Leoni were battling her own demons and suffered from bouts of depression and rage, undiagnosed of course. And with her husband constantly out of the house, she targeted the brunt of her unhappiness to the girls. It began as little comments but it was swell and fester. She performed white glove tests on the surfaces to see if things were cleaned as thoroughly as she preferred. She even demanded the girls to get down on their hands and knees to pick up a small scrap of paper before launching into a fit over the mess. Eventually, things would escalate to Madame Leone physically harming the girls, and on some occasions slamming their heads against the wall. With all of this happening during their 14-hour workdays, Christine and Leah were fed up and were one ridiculous request away from snapping. Leah 
On the evening of February 2nd, 1933, Monsieur René went out to dinner and expected his wife and daughter to join him later. They left Christine and Leah alone in the house at night when the lights went out, and there are varying reports of what exactly happened. Some say that the iron had blown a fuse, while other sources say that Christine urinated in an electrical socket. I choose to believe the more likely answer, because allegedly the power had gone out in their home twice in the past week. And when Madame and her daughter returned home in the evening from a day of shopping to get ready for their night out, they found the house in complete darkness. This inconvenience made the Madame freak out. Allegedly, she attacked the sisters on the first floor landing, but instead of accepting their abuse, they fought back. Christine lunged at Genevieve and instructed Leah to do the same to the madame. What happened next created a scene so violent and gory that words cannot do it justice. Filled with rage, Christine began to jab and claw at Genevieve's eyes. Leah followed. The two out their eyes with the woman lying on the floor moaning before taking a hammer out and stitching in their heads and faces. They then went into the kitchen to grab a blade and stab them repeatedly in the back, among other places. The sisters would later say they cut them up like you would prepare a rabbit for dinner. The whole ordeal took place over the course of an hour, with only the light of a single candle burning. Well, Monsieur René had been waiting at the restaurant for quite some time and was getting worried about his family. So he went home to make sure everything was all right and see what the holdup was. When he returned, he found the front door bolted shut from the inside and the entire house was completely in dark, except for a single candle burning in the servants' quarters. Worried that a prowler might be inside, he fetched the authorities for help. The police climbed over the back garden wall and got into the house through the back door. In the darkness, they climbed the stairs up to the first floor landing, and when they did, they found a little white marble on the steps. But then they looked closer and saw that it was actually an eyeball. In the dark, they discovered the remains of the two women in a state described as like a pulp. Worried that the maids had suffered a similar fate, they searched the house for the sister's room, but found it locked from the inside. A locksmith was summoned and the door was eventually opened. And inside the bedroom, they found the sisters in bed, wearing only their dressing gowns. And beside the single glowing candle was the bloodied hammer with some hair still clinging to it. Leia simply said, we were expecting you. The girls were questioned following the discovery and it went pretty rocky. Christine answered all of the questions, and noticing this, police geared their questions towards Leah, who remained quiet. Leah almost immediately cracked when they asked her why this happened, but Christine kept her cool. She even tried to convince the police that her sister was deaf and dumb, and had no idea what she was talking about. The sisters were arrested immediately, and confessed soon after, but said that the deed was done in self-defense. They were held in separate prison cells, which they obviously did not like, and began to experience immense distress because of it. When they were allowed to finally meet again, they were giddy, and began unbuttoning each other's clothes in an embrace that officials speculated meant their relationship may have been more than just sisterly love. In fact, police even speculated that the reason the sisters had the women's eyes out was that they had caught them in an embrace, the kind you wouldn't expect sisters to share. But. That is purely speculation. After being in prison for several months, Christine experienced a fit in which she tried to gouge out her own eyes. She would later say that this episode was exactly like the feeling she experienced before committing the crimes. With this in mind, the question became, were the girls fit to stand trial? Through psychological evaluations, it was determined that the sisters were mentally stable and they were fit to be tried. But the fits Christine had experienced were likely from a sensation popular with twins and siblings described as folia a deux, where two people experience a shared hallucination. In the end, the jurors took 40 minutes to determine that the sisters were guilty. Christine initially received capital punishment, but was later downgraded to life in prison. Leah, who was thought to be under the influence and control of her sister, was given a lighter sentence of just 10 years. The sisters were incarcerated separately, which took a huge toll on them. 
Christine fell into a huge depression and only lasted four years before dying of cachexia, which basically means wasting away. Leah ended up only serving eight of her 10-year sentence and was released in 1941. She had to move back in with Clement, a punishment in itself, and assumed a new identity before returning to work as a maid once more. But this time she stuck to hotels. Leah is thought to have lived a long life and died in 1982, but during the filming of a documentary about the sisters, a French producer met and interviewed a woman in 2000 who claimed to be Leah. The woman has suffered a stroke and was incapable of speaking, but whatever the truth is, that woman died in 2001. In the end, the sisters got their wish and were buried together in Cemetery Bautelier in Nantes, France. And that is the absolutely gory story of the Papon sisters. What do you think? Is it a metaphor for a class struggle or just two sisters pushed too far? Let me know in the comments below.